Today we are going to look at making a 3D looking five pointed star. Uh, it's a fairly easy way to do it and I think it takes a bit of the hassle out of trying to align up everything. So um, hopefully this is helpful given that Christmas is coming. Some of you may want to make Christmas themed things and obviously the five pointed star is fairly prominent in Christmas decorations. So I'll just quickly go through the steps. Um, first thing you want to do is you want to just make sure you're in pixels. Just makes it a bit easier. You don't have to. You can you can keep it in whatever measurement you like. But I just like to make sure I'm in pixels. So quick way to do it. You can either use the view tool, and once you actually select it, it'll bring it up. If you're not in the view tool, you just press Z, Z for zebra, and go to pixels. Uh, next thing you want to do is make sure you have the uh, guides on that will help when you need to find the center of the star that you're going to create so I've just gone to the star tool and I'm just going to draw up a star now I'm going to make sure it's actually equal in height and width so I'm just going to do 200 pixels you can do whatever size you like now you can see there's the center there um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the, the facets, so these, these edges. Now you can hand draw them with the, um, with the pen tool if you like. Uh, it can be a little bit tricky and I've found an easier way to do it. So I'm just going to make a copy of that. I'm just going to um, press Control J and give myself another star. Now I'm going to convert this one into curves so I can get my nodes all active. And then I'm just going to remove all bar one point. And there's one little thing that I'm going to do that kind of makes it a bit more user friendly. So I'm going to get one of these nodes and I'm going to drag it up until I get to the center and you'll see it stops. Okay, so I'm going to make this little, this little single pointed section like this. Okay, so I'll just make that a little bit lighter so we can see what we're doing. Just make it like that. Next thing is I want to actually make um, two halves of this. So I'll just make sure I'm in the node mode again, and I'm just going to delete that. So you can see where I'm heading with this. Next thing I want to do is make sure that I, I want to copy this and turn it around. I don't want to have to do it manually. So if you make sure that you have this tool up here, the transform origins, you'll see it's it brings up this little node that actually shows the center of that that um, particular uh, item. So I want to drag that into the right into the center. So you'll see, hopefully, it's right where it should be in the bottom left corner of that particular shape. Now I want to make a copy just to use later. Um, so I'm just going to press Control J again. I'll just move this over here and actually just flip it horizontally. So this is going to be the other facet. Now I'll just darken that a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. And you'll see because I've already moved that, that node where the center is, I've moved that into the center. It's mirrored it, so it's also in the center now. And you'll see when you drag it across, it kind of locks in place. Okay, so now I'm going to create a copy of this one. You can start with the other one if you like, it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to press Control J and then I'm going to do 72 degrees because 360 divided by... 5 is 72, and I will make this rotate 72 degrees. So hopefully it all lines up, and you'll see it looks as though it's lined up fairly well. Now, because I'm happy with that, I won't go back and start again. I will um, press Control J some more times. And now I can do it with this one as well. So same thing. Press Control J, make a copy, then go 72, and make some more. Now you could leave it like that without this extra facet, but I like to have a bit of control over the um, over the, the gradients and things like that. Now there's tons of things you can do once you get to this point. One of the things I like to do is actually embed everything into the bottom star that we created. If you recall, there was one already underneath. So I'm going to put that inside the star. Now make sure you hover it. This creates like a layer mask. If you hover it over the shape, hover it over the name, and you'll see it actually embeds it or nests it inside the inside the uh, original shape. Now, for just for ease of use, I want to just make sure they're all 
together. You see the lighter ones are all together like that. And I want to say create a gradient or something so it looks a bit more three dimensional, you know, um, that might be a good starting point. So it's lighter at the front, and a bit darker at the back. I might make it just a little bit darker for just to see how that looks. Now I, oh no, I've already copied and pasted. Well, then we can just use the style picker tool and I'll just unload it because I was using it before. And I'm just going to suck up the style of this one and just pop it on the others. So that's super easy and it's already starting to look uh, a lot more interesting, I guess. Um, next thing I want to do is maybe manipulate the other side. So you'll see I've got this one selected and I might do the same thing. I'll just actually, um, actually put a gradient in and maybe I'll make it slightly darker or lighter or something. I'm not sure. Hang on. I'll just see how this looks. So there we go. I'll make it a little bit darker like that. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Unload. Now there's no reason why we have to have all these as the same, you know, this one, this one, this one, we can make it so it looks more three dimensional. So I might want to change these ones as well. And I might decide to uh, just unload that. I might make this one like that. Might make this one like that. Um, so you'll see that with a bit of, you know, experimenting, you can actually create already a 3D effect. And there isn't even any actual effects in place at the moment. Um, the next thing you can do is you can add effects. So you might want to um, actually make it a little bit softer that the, the actual edges. Now, sometimes it can leave a bit of a line and things like that. So see there's a line there because you've got them all nested inside. Oh, there's probably another way to do this, I, possibly changing the background color, but one sort of quick and easy way to play around with this, if you're happy with how it looks, is just go into the node, into that shape where you want to overlap the edges a little bit because it's softer. You might want to just curve it a little bit. And that'll just get rid of that. If you do it on both sides, it should help. All right, so you need to just experiment with that a little bit. I would suggest maybe putting that as a darker color as well. Ooh, fancy. Darker color might help. Lighter color might look interesting, like folds. So it's really just experimenting um, with it. That's when you make a curve um, that is actually that is actually overlapping. So that's one thing that I've encountered that's probably not ideal. You could even make a um, a copy of it that might help as well. Yeah. So so I'll just copy that. I'll just go Control C. Yeah. So it, it reduces the uh, the little edges there a little bit. Um, what else can we do? So we've got the star now because it's still a star. It's it's still within this um, star tool um, function. If you actually reselect that, you can actually alter the the shape of the star. So you can make like a pointy star. You can make you know one that's a bit sort of thicker. Um, so yeah, you can play around with the the actual points and you'll see each of these orange nodes adjusts a different thing. So that bringing it right in, so I think it's altering the thickness of the points and this one's altering the central point. So it's, um, yeah, looks like they kind of do a similar job actually. Oh no, there's a distance thing there. Anyway, each of the tools has something like that. Now um, you might want to make a star that, you know, has lots of points like a, almost like a snowflake or something. So you can copy the entire object, of course. And because we've still got the node in the center, you can just freely turn it as much as you like. You know, you can make a star that looks like that. Was it maybe 30 degrees or 30? It'll be half of 70. Hang on. Half of 36 degrees, maybe. There you go, half of 72. So you've got yourself a, um, you know, interesting, almost 3D looking 
almost looks like one of the, you know, some of the more complicated um, geometric shapes like that. So look, there's tons of things you can do. Um, the other, one other thing that I like to do, uh, starting to slow my computer down a little bit because I do have a lot of effects going on. I also have all these stars happening. So I might just, um, no, nah, it doesn't matter. I'll just keep going. If you notice your computer's starting to slow down a bit, it's because of the effects that you, you're adding. Um, that really takes a toll on your computer. Um, one other thing that I'll do before my computer slows right down is I'll actually add a 3D effect. So you can just have a simple effect like that, which is quite nice. And then you can alter the effects themselves. So it took me a while to find that, that little, that tiny little gear actually gives you all these extra settings. And, um, you know, you can really have some fun playing around with those settings. Now, say I'm going to change the light direction. So you imagine it is a 3D shape and I'm going to add like a, uh, a color. So I can add multiple light sources and like in a real 3D program. So I might add a blue or something like that. And then I might go and add another one and do it on maybe the top or diagonal or something like that. And I might do it, I don't know, a complementary color like a yellow. And then, um, you know, maybe change the, um, actually change the, the lightness of the, of the shape itself it might make a bit of a difference. Um, things like that. You can add more, you can add more, um, effects. So, and once you've, um, also once you've got the effect, you can then click on the FX letters and that will bring up your, your controls. Um, so you can alter the ambient light. You can alter the radius of the 3d effect, lots of different things. You can even just make it more subtle. So it's not as full on, um, with complex shapes, it tends to look a bit rubbery or something. So that's not ideal for everyone. Um, personally, yeah, use it sparingly, um, till you get, you know, the hang of it because you can sort of overdo it a little bit. Um, but yeah, there's lots of things you can do. Shininess as well, which is cool. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. Um, I hope you have some fun with that. There's obviously tons more things you can do with this. And this would also work with other shapes. Um, I might do some more videos and maybe work towards making something a little bit more complicated, like an entire um, scene or something using these 3D shapes. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you again soon. Please make sure you uh, like this video too and uh, subscribe if you want to see more of this sort of thing. Thanks.